Rock, paper, scissors, shoe. Uh, you started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bollocks Talks and Tangent. As you can tell, I'm here with my dear friend and producer who's up front today in front of the camera, Blake Blevins. Hello. Because Troy is taking the night off. He's going to be seeing a, a common man who's uncommon uh, out at Fort Mose for the Jazz Festival. Still some shows left to go this weekend if you can get out there. It's a fabulous, fabulous event. But tonight, we're doing our best to uphold the tradition here, and we're going to be talking about Super Bowls. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, 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 there you go. The bum, bum, Where's bum, John Facenda and the voice of God when you need him? <laughs> but before we do that, as tradition will have it, we're going to thank our sponsors for keeping us on the air. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a bunch to say this week because I took full advantage of some of our sponsors, which I actually like spending time at. We had friends in town from Chicago, so we did the whole gamut. Obviously, we ate at Meehan, sat in the backyard at a nice fire pit table, had a delicious afternoon there. Meehan's uh, on the bayfront, one of the best-run restaurants in St. Augustine, three bars, fresh oysters, great food, great staff, fabulous libations. Um, they make one of the most interesting key lime pies, and it's tough to call it a pie. I would call it a key lime timbalo, but it's fabulous. It's absolutely outstanding, and you should try that if you get the chance in your key lime pie aficionado. And then, you know, wash it down with, you know, something light and light and easy, like their house-made Irish cream whiskey. It is thick and delicious and fabulous and rich. It's a dessert unto itself. Uh, we also have the Pirate Treasure Museum. Oh, one of the best, Lenny. One of the best. I was there just yesterday with our friends, and you know what? I had the pleasure of watching Captain Mayhem absolutely mesmerize the children that were on his tour with him. It was fabulous just watching the kids see this big pirate in front of them, and the kids were absolutely enraptured. Uh, and again, found new stuff. It's the third time I've been there. Found new stuff this time. Can't wait to go back and find more things. Uh, can't miss it. It's on Sponsor Row right opposite the fort on the bayfront. Uh, also a great place. Over there as well is Citygate Distillery, uh, and we went in there too, did a tasting there. I think we ended up tasting like eight or nine little little thimbles full of some of their fabulous flavors. Do you, uh, uh, do you remember which one was your favorite? The peach is still my favorite, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The peach is just, it tastes like your fresh peaches. Um, and I would use that next time I'm making a peach pie when they're in season. I'm going to use that to amp it up a little bit. Can't, can't go wrong there. And they do free tours there as well. And we're on the subject of free tours. St. Augustine Distillery. My goodness. Um, they've gone from guided tours to self-guided tours. But I believe I saw a sign there that says they're going to start to work in guided tours again. So when we get more information on that, we'll share that with you. But I will tell you, they are very generous with what you may taste there. You, they, they give you a couple of cocktails as you do your tour. It's very interesting because in the ice plant, you get a history of ice. You get a history of the building. Uh, and then you get the explanation of how they're making their products in the, in the, the, the big still. I think it's Betty is their big, their big pot still. Um, and that's great, too. And then when you get into the, the gift shop, uh, you know, because like everything else in Florida and America, please exit through the gift shop. Uh, you have a wonderful selection of their rum, their vodka, their gin, and then five bourbons. Tonight, I'm drinking the Saint. Uh, it's, a, a, it's a delicious high-end bourbon that they make there. It's 109 proof, which means it's 54.5% alcohol. I think my math is right on that, Blake. The math, math doesn't lie, Lunster. Okay. And they age it for three years, so it, it takes all the rough edges away from it, and it's absolutely delicious. As a matter of fact, cheers to y'all. Cheers. Slancha, my dear friend. Slancha. And uh, we also have a Bear Kresge and Associates. It's tax season is coming in now. Uh, if you don't have your accountant on hand, get a local accountant, a Bear Kresge and Associates. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, bourbon's good. It'll cure you. Uh, they do all your tax planning. They'll do some financial planning for you. A wonderful organization. I've got a dear friend who's been working with them for a while, and, you know, he's out of jail, so that's a good thing. Not that he was ever in jail, but, you know, keeps him, keeps him free and easy. So Abair Kresge and Associates for all your tax and financial planning needs, and they're here in St. Augustine. Uh, if you're looking to expand your home if you're looking for a new home, if you want to do some commercial real estate, there's a man in town who knows this town like the back of his hand, and he is at Coquina Coast Realty. Coquina Coast Realty, the number would be? 
904-669-7901. At a town call collect. Uh, that can answer all your real estate needs for commercial, residential, um, or just answer any questions you have about the housing issues in St. Augustine, as far as where you can move to, what you can do, what's available, what the housing stock is like right now, because this is a great place to live, I will tell you that. And then last but certainly not least, Kaiser's Deli, number four, White Street, right on the bend of Anastasia Boulevard, halfway between the uh, amphitheater and the bridge. And it is a wonderful deli, all your sandwich needs. And I will tell you right now, try the bollocks. We got a sandwich named after us. I, 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 I finally How tried was the, that? I tried the bollocks today. It was fantastic. That's turkey, cheddar cheese, bacon, lettuce, tomato on a hoagie roll with a little bit of ranch dressing to tie it all together. That's the bollocks. They have a full line of Boar's Head products. They've got a great selection of wine, a great selection of beer that you can drink on-premise or take off-premise with you and take them home with you. Uh, buy five beers, get the six one free. You're not going to go wrong when you go to Kaiser's. Say hello to Kurt, tell him we sent you. As a matter of fact, tell all our sponsors that we sent you when you stop into any of these places. They'd like to know that we are doing what we should for them because we appreciate what they're doing for us. Okay, we may mention them again later in the show as we do, but right now, Blake, you got a word origin for me? I do. So, so, so I basically around today's top tonight's topic about Super Bowls, and and and, and, and so, 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 if I throw you a football, what do most people call that ball? The football, the pigskin. Yep. Okay. So, so, so do you want to know why people call it the pigskin? I do. Do you know why they call it the pigskin? I'm going to say no. All right, good, good. Suspense is killing you, isn't it, to find out why, why it's called a pigskin, I'll isn't just keep, it? I'll just keep drinking until I find out. Indeed. <laughs> All right. All right, so it is called a pigskin because because when football was originally developed, it was originally made, made out of a pig's bladder. Bladder, there you go, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so many historians note that before the 1850s, it, 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 it was, was once made from the tan skin of a pig. But more likely, the football was made from a pig's bladder. Mm -hmm. The bladder was used to help inflate the ball, but the name pigskin endures today. So, 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 so the inside of the ball was 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 a pig's bladder, but the outside is 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 a uh, cowhide. It actually right. still is cowhide today. Uh, Wilson makes uh, two hundred sixteen balls just for the Super Bowl alone. Wow. And I don't think we're going to have any deflate gate this year because the Patriots and Tom Brady aren't playing, so it should be safe for all inflators on the game. Oh, geez. Okay, okay, New York Jets fan over here. Oh no, I just you know, I the Patriots were just too good. How how much did they torture you? Did do you, do you still remember uh uh what was it uh the buff fumble? Like, did you remember? <laughs> you remember seeing that live? I do. I do. Tortured memories, huh? <laughs> hey, do, look, do, do you wish you had St. Uh, St. Augustine Distillery bourbon that night? Pretty much. But I'm a Mets fan, so, you know, I'm used to disappointment in the land of sports, believe me. However, when we get into it, I'll be talking about a glorious year for New York, so don't you worry about a thing. Um, well, you know, when you toss that pigskin around, where do you play it? You play it on a field. And what's another name for that field? The pitch. The gridiron. Ah. The gridiron, ladies and gentlemen. That's correct. Um, two definitions of gridiron. One is just that. It's a grid of metal that you put on a barbecue or a grill, um, and you cook your food on it. But when they started um, introducing first downs or yardage distinctions in pro football, maybe it was even college football at that point in time, quite possibly. I don't know that it was pro because it was the late 1800s. And I um, don't know that the Canton Bulldogs were there back then. But they um, lined the field, and you had a big rectangle, but then they started adding cross marks to it. And if you were sitting in the cheap seats up top, it actually looked like a gridiron. So uh, that's what was going on there. It actually looked like a gridiron. Lenny. Easy, easy. Thank you. Uh, I said you, stop that. You had to turn it down. See, well, I was doing so well technically today, so now I'm not. Uh, hey, I got the share button, Dan. I didn't get your father wasn't here to harass me. We were smoothing right along. I was just looking to see who's in the comments. I'm still here. Yes, Barbara Jean, it's very good bourbon. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
But uh, the, when you looked at it from the top, it looked like a gridiron and the name stuck. And that came about in the 1800s, the late 1800s, when the fields were um, created to enforce the first downs or the yardage distinctions. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Gesundheit. Thank you. It'll come. Don't you worry. So those are our two-word origins. Blake and I decided that we've got so much fun to talk about with this being Super Bowl weekend. Um, we're talking about our favorite games. I'm also adding in my least favorite game. We're doing half times. We're doing Super Bowl advertisements. Um, we got a bunch to play with today. So yeah, Blake, we, we definitely do. All right. So let's let's start with like before uh, but, but before the game starts. Like like so so obviously most of us have 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 been to a lot of parties. Like so what's what's like so so what so have you have, have you ever hosted a Super Bowl party before or like. Like, what, what, like, what, what was like, what was like a favorite part, like party tradition or memory that you had? You, you see, where in my world, the Super Bowl is my holiday, mm. um, and we're getting close to the point where it may actually coincide with President's Day, because if you look at the dates from some of the original Super Bowls, and we'll talk about Super Bowl three, which was on um, January twelfth in nineteen sixty nine. Um, now we're playing a Super Bowl on February 12th, a full month later. Um, I've got a, a, a dear friend of mine uh, who his birthday is January 27th. And we always used to celebrate the Super Bowl. Sometimes it would be on a Sunday and his birthday would be on the Super Bowl. It keeps getting pushed further and further and further back. Now, there is a hue and cry for people to want the Super Bowl Monday, day after, to be a national holiday so that people don't have to go to work hungover or late. I think that if it keeps sliding back another week, it's just going to coincide with President's Day. The Super Bowl will be on the Sunday before President's Day. Monday is a federal holiday, and it accomplishes everything right there in one fell swoop. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe I'll start the I'll start the national trend to but then, you know, but then they're going to add two more games. The season's going to go on forever. So we'll see what happens there. Um but yeah, that's that's my Super Bowl is a very important day to me. Um, my mother used to throw Super Bowl parties. You know, that was the time where it was on broadcast TV and you had to figure out how to get extra TVs into your house because it was well before the days of flat panel TVs that you could move around at will. Um, so it was really pretty good as far as I was concerned. Um, and my mother would do a great thing because my mother was the, the queen of doing, uh, Finger food, appetizers, and desserts. She seldom had a main course at her parties, and that really worked very well for her, and um, I've taken up on that. So I will be hosting a small group of friends at our house on Sunday, and I've already got my chicken wings marinating. I put a friend in charge of ribs, and we will fill in the blanks accordingly. My wife wants coleslaw. That will happen because if she wants coleslaw, she gets coleslaw. She may even get the potato salad that she asked for as well, but I forgot to buy potatoes today. Right. So we'll see what happens there. Right. Real quick, Lenny, is, is 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 your phone silence on? The little side thing? Oh, Let's, you know. That might see? be why your notifications might be going off. You didn't chide me today on that one. There you go. See, and I was so good on sharing the show and not screwing that up. Okay. Yeah, we're excellent. Yeah. So, so, so. So oh, does Kaiser remind me to show up for work tomorrow? <laughs> Indeed, which is what you should do. I will. I already set my alarm for it. way too early in the morning. Good. Right. So your Super Bowl party memories? So my Super Bowl party. So 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 when I had my family together, uh, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, this was when 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 I was still living in a, in an HOA neighborhood. Okay. The best. Fun. That, that's a story for another time. Uh, my mom always brought brought like all of her friends together. We usually uh, like so so we usually have like 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 four areas of TVs for like for like the main like the main adults, <laughs> uh, teenagers, uh, the little the little kids watching Dora the Explorer, then then the, the people just out out by the pool. Okay. Uh, so 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 I evolved from there. Uh, we usually we, it, 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 we usually get uh, we usually had a um, catering from, from 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 the place on Old Moultrie. Right. Yeah, so they had they had like really great food, but also sometimes it was, it was just public swings. Which okay, is, hey, hey, that's fine. Hey, hey. Yeah. They are really good. like 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 I I know, I know not the best chicken wings, but 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 but, but, but bon a lazy Sunday. Exactly get, right. Get, got nothing else to do. Easy to get, do. Get 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 a box of fried chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you though. Um, after I graduated college and. Most of my friends and I who were in college still ended up gravitating locally. Most of us were in and around Manhattan or New York, and we would host a, a Super Bowl party every year. Dear friends of mine would host a Super Bowl party every year, and I never missed a kickoff. 
But, you know, at that point in time, I started working in the restaurant business a couple of years after college. And it was sort of tough to get the Super Bowl off, though, you know, depending on your restaurant. If it wasn't a bar restaurant, nobody was coming in. When I had my own restaurants, I used to sit at the bar with a friend of mine and we would bet on every play. We used one dollar and it went back and forth a lot of times because <coughs> you had men whose consciousness was raised and their yeah, wives. The bourbons kicked the bed. The bourbons killing you. Today. It's not killing me. It's just a little stuffed up. Maybe Amanda, maybe Amanda got me. Ooh. Well, this is the microphone that she's I know. using. Well, I, 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 I'm dissing myself away from that microphone. I would, I would. But, uh, you know, I remember one year, and I don't remember which Super Bowl it was, but literally dove in in front of the group to dive in front as the kicker's foot was leaning back to kick, kick it off, and I dove in and made the kickoff right on time. So I try not to miss a kickoff or a food Super Bowl game. Awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an important event in America. It, it is really indeed. is. Yeah. So, and this is going to be a good one, man. This is going to be a good one. 49ers and the the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. They both got a they both got a bunch of wins under their belt. Uh the Chiefs have uh, 3, the Niners have 5. Niners win to uh, on Sunday and they will tie the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots at 6 Super Bowls apiece. <sighs> that that's the part that I that hurts me about rooting because I'm I'm kind of rooting for the the 49ers, because I do not want to see Taylor Swift near the Lombardi Trophy. Wait, you're not expecting her at halftime to to endorse Joe Biden and have the entire CIA okay, okay, deep state okay, coup okay. to come to truth? Okay, okay, I'm not thinking that, but there's there's a little concern. What about, what about, what about Travis Kelsey getting down on one knee in the middle I of think that's and giving her happen. a ring? I think that's going to happen okay. if, if the Chiefs win. I don't I, think uh, either of them. I I I, see, I I I I I don't believe the whole like like Taylor Swift conspiracy theory about it about her and, and no, Joe Biden. No, like like she like look like she doesn't get that involved in politics. She only does it if if, if it really affects like 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 her image to a point. But well, I also don't see her bullying her way into the into the middle of the field at halftime to do something like that. So I mean, people are people are crazed with this. It makes no sense. Leave, plus, the, plus, leave the woman alone. Plus, 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 plus also, it's it's it, it, it's Usher's moment. If it, right. if, if it was Kanye was performing, then like, yeah, I, can, I would totally <laughs> understand. Right. And everybody rooting for everybody rooting for her in that case. Yeah, man, I'd like to see somebody take the mic out of his hand for a change. Yeah. So, um, what the what did I do? I don't know. Apparently, Barbara Jean is upset with you for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Okay. But. Uh, Oh, maybe because you're not rooting for the Chiefs as you're, as you're dressed all in red. Okay, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Yeah, I know. That's another reason why you don't want the Niners to win, because then they'll tie the Steelers for the most wins. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Barbara Jean. Did, <laughs> did the Super Bowl four torment you that bad? <laughs> did Len Dawson give you nightmares while you're sleeping? <laughs> no, but he used to give me nightmares when I was a Raiders fan, and Jan Stenrud with his giant leg and Len Dawson used to torture me as a Raiders fan when I was a kid. <laughs> Nothing. You know what? Thank you. That may expose a deep-seated reason why I really don't like the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> that That's just become very clear to me now as a Raiders fan. They were just Horrible. Don't worry, yes. Barbara Jean. We, 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 we'll talk about the best Super Bowl halftime of all time. You know which one it's going to be. But for right now, but, 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 but before we before we go into discussion time, real quick, ch- chicken wings or chicken tenders for Super Bowl? Wings. Yeah. Me- me- messy, but worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you, uh, what, what type of sauce, though? I have my wings. I, I bought the wings today. Cut them into, into individual pieces. So, you know, you've got your drumette and your flats, as they call them. And I've got them all tossed in a bright electric orange sazon. So it's, you know, it's salty. It's spicy. It's just electric orange. As a matter of fact, I got it off my fingers, too, because it looked a little bit, you know, when I did it. So they're, they're going to be good and through. And I'm going to either do them, roast them in the oven on a rack or... Put them in the air fryer. I'm not quite sure which. Uh, so, 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 did it make you look like that you were murdering an, an Oompa Loompa? Could be. <laughs> with the yeah. sauce? Yeah, with the orange. Yeah. yeah. Pretty close. All Pretty right. close. All right. Uh, and, and I also agree to, uh, agree with, uh, oh, I'm, I'm a ranch guy and I like blue cheese, so I go either way. But, uh, and I agree with Barbara me. Jean that the Super Bowl, the Pro Bowl should be after the Super Bowl. I don't, I, I, I don't think they should have the Pro Bowl at all. Well, they, they, you know, wait, we're, we're, we're a season away from having flag football as an Olympic sport. I, I, I would like that, like, like, like just okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? In all candor, 
um, pro football is becoming flag football the way the way they have. It's um, always been since, no, since, no, since, no, since, since, since they're Brady they're and Manning. Account, Brady and Mahomes. It was like that with Manning. Did he whine every time he got hit? No. Not to the best of my knowledge. He may have. And and correct me if I'm wrong. But I, I will tell you, you know, somebody somebody looks cross-eyed at Patrick Mahomes and he wants a flag. You know, play the game. I appreciate the man's talent. I appreciate Tom Brady's talent. But they're whiny little wimps. No, he touched me. Can I have a penalty, please? Stand up. It's football. Shake it off and go. Aaron. Hey, all I have to say is there was not an even distribution of penalties because Jared Goff got pummeled in his game against the Niners and they never threw a flag on him. Somebody looked cross-eyed at Patrick Mahomes and he gets the flag. So I, I, I just don't think it's an even playing field as far as um, roughing the passer is concerned these days. And I think it takes a, a serious weapon out of the defense's arsenal. Mm-hmm. But, all right. All right. All right. Next. All right. So which, which path do you want to go? Do you want to go Commercial or halftime show first? Oh, let's talk about Super Bowls first. Why don't we talk about our favorites and our least favorites? Really? Yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to the fluff. Okay, I was planning on We want to save them? We can save them. I'm not cheap, but I'm easy. We can do it. We can do it. We can do best Super Bowls of all time. All right. And we can save our worst for after the fact. How's that? All right. Okay. Your best? My best? Ooh, I I, I have a lot to go off of. Like, so, so So the ones I have is... Is uh is, is Super Bowl uh is, is Super Bowl forty nine that Seahawks uh Patriots where Malcolm Butler intercepts Wilson at the goal line. Oh which, my which, goodness! Which which, which they should have which which the Seahawks should have ran the ball for the one yard line. Marshawn Lynch. Does yeah. He, you know no yes no maybe. But actually, fun fact because of that by 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 can't by can call it my favorite Super Bowl because I was on the bus with my dad to Washington D.C. for my trip. Okay. Yeah, yeah so 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 I I really can't call it the best. The best for me is actually Super Bowl 13 Cow- Cowboys Steelers. Ooh, back when men were men and football hurt. Yep, Terry Terry Bradshaw was I think he was <laughs> league MVP, Roger Staubach as 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 as, as like I, honestly right now still is the best Dallas co- Cowboys quarterback of all time. Sorry, sorry Troy Aikman if you're watching this, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, but yeah. but but this, this Super Bowl is mo- it's most famous for Jackie Smith, not catching the ball in the yeah. end zone. There's a lot of that, I would tell you. Well, my favorite was Super Bowl three. Uh, it was a glorious year in New York in 1969, because the Mets did win the World Series. Thank you very much. And Tom Seaver was terrific. The New York Knicks won the NBA championship that year as well. Thank you, Willis Reed. Get up, Willis. Get up, Willis. Yeah. And um, Joe Willie Namath and the upstart American Football League New York Jets were playing the Titans of mm-hmm. the National Football League, mm-hmm. the Baltimore Colts, mm-hmm. coached by the legendary largest winning, most winningest football coach in professional sports, in professional football, Don Shula. Uh, 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 he, he, he also makes great steak sauce, by the way. Yeah. And he's got a steak a chain yeah. of steak restaurants. Now, 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 do you know who who the quarterback was for the Colts for I that do. game? Who was it? Well, Earl Morrill, who was the league MVP that year, started the game. Mm-hmm. He got yanked with about three minutes left for Johnny U, one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game, Johnny I, Unitas. Yeah, I agree. And I got news for you. It didn't make any difference, mm-hmm. you know? And it was a very low-scoring game, and I will tell you, it was the eighth game of the season that Joe Namath failed to throw a touchdown pass. He didn't throw a touchdown pass in the game, you know? He threw for uh, 206 yards. He was 17 for 28, 206, 206 yards. Um, but he got no touchdown passes. But the Jets did intercept um, the Colts four times. Earl Marl three times and Johnny Unitas late. One of them was in the end zone too. Um, so they took a bunch of points off the board there as well. And Weeb Eubank... Made his name as coaching history by beating them, but the entire the entire um, hitch of that entire thing is Joe Willie Namath being him and and the man that he was. The man had a little bit of swagger, maybe a little bit of a little bit of uh, confidence. He ended up 
declaring that the Jets would win that game. He was all over Miami saying, we're winning this game. He absolutely guaranteed it. Mm -hmm. And it came to fruition. Right. So what do you think is the best look for Broadway Joe? The fur coat or, or the pantyhose? Oh, the fur coat. Oh, yeah. Bachelor's three, man. When he had, when he had that club. And I will tell you, um, when I was a kid, there was a Hallmark store on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. And they had a basement gallery. So you could buy all your cards and all your stuff upstairs. But downstairs, they had a basement gallery. And they would do um, celebrity Christmas trees. And my mother took me in there. I was a, I was a wee tot at the time. I must have been 10, 11. Uh, and um, Joe Namath's Christmas tree was very simple. All it had was red lipsticks hanging on them. Mm. So, you know, that was Broadway Joe. Right. Yeah. All right. And we post this on an honorable mention for uh, Super Bowl uh, 43. That was Steelers Cardinals. The, the the most famous play was the was was either the James Harrison Immaculate Inception or, or the San Antonio Holmes last minute catch. Like those two like, was like iconic moments for Super Bowl history. But 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 but, 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 but it's mainly forgotten about because it was against the Cardinals. So but, but I had Kurt Warner on the team, so like right. that was his third Super Bowl, so that it was a yeah. really great game. Yeah. But hey, I'm giving honorable mention to 22 Super Bowl 22, uh, Bucks when uh, Doug Williams started the game. Uh, Jay Schroeder was the quarterback for the season. Doug Williams came in, started the game, played one of the best Super Bowl games of all time. First of all. He put he put to bed the fact that a black man could not be a quarterback and be successful because mm -hmm. Doug Williams threw at one of the one of the greatest Super Bowl games. He was eighteen for twenty nine, three hundred and forty yards, four touchdowns, one interception. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And and by the way, and he was doing that in those pretty peach uniforms because the, the Buccaneers at the time had some of the some of the strangest uniforms through their history. And this was in, I think when they were wearing all those peach ones, and uh, like obviously the, the creamsicles, I believe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was, ooh, I don't like creamsicles. Yeah. I do like the peach liqueur at uh, City Gates Distillery, but be that as it may. But yeah, and he threw all those touchdowns in one quarter. Mm -hmm. It was a great game. Great game for Doug Williams. And it was a turning point in the NFL as well. Yeah. And now nobody says Trey Schrader anymore. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Okay. All right. Do you, do, uh, so, so you, would you want to save worse for last? Because, because I have Either a feeling, way. I have a feeling you, you really want to get this game. Oh, it was painful. Chose. It was just so painful. We can do it now because it was horribly painful. First of all, it was the New England Patriots coming back from the, 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 the brink of disaster and they ended up winning in overtime. And it was, it was God awful because, you know, the, the Atlanta Falcons and, and Matty Ice just collapsed. It was, it was just horrific. That was a, I mean, technically, it was a good game. But, yeah, until but, 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 but yeah. it was just painful to watch. Like, 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 Atlanta was there. Like, all they had to do was run the ball. Yeah. Like, just multiple times. Just don't mess up. Don't don't pass the ball. Just run down the clock. You will win. But no, it was there was no score by either team in the first quarter. Uh. Patriots had a field goal in the second quarter, and the Falcons had three touchdowns, so it was 21-3 at the half. Patriots got two field goals in the third quarter, and the Falcons got a touchdown, so it was 28-9 going into the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Falcons didn't score again. Yeah. And they ended up losing in overtime 34-28. You know how many times Tom Brady threw the ball in that game? I think, I think it was like over, like over 40 times, I believe. Or 50. Keep going. 50 times? Keep going. 60 times? 62 attempts. He was 43 for 62. 466 yards. I mean, you can't take the man's talent away from him. He had two touchdowns, one interception, 466 yards, 43 for 62. I am telling you, it was fascinating. Dude. You know? He, and again, he, you, you can't fault the man's talent. And by then, and also, then he wasn't whining because it was a long time ago and they were allowed to hit him. I don't know if they got to him, apparently, but but that's fine. You yeah. know, yeah. Plus, also that year, he only played twelve games because of Deflate Gate, right? Like, so, 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 so for like the first four games, I think it was uh, Jacoby Brissett was same season. Yeah. Okay. Same season. Like it, it was a twenty sixteen season. So, but 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 the Falcons were having like a great year. Like th they were only eleven and five. But Matt but Matt Matt Ryan was like the guy. Like he, like I think he, I think he passed over like forty eight hundred yards that year, 
It was and just like like one of the best efficient seasons for a quarterback that year. And poor Matty Ice went backwards from that point. I know. It reminded me of the the New England Patriots uh, Chicago Bears Super Bowl when Tony Eason was the quarterback for the Chicago for the New England Patriots, and the Chicago Bears were just a monster of a defense and a monster of a team. I still I said for years after that that Tony Eason was still wet in his bed for a year after that game because he got pummeled. He got beaten pillar to post. Oh my goodness. What a what a performance by the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Your yeah. worst? My worst is actually the twenty third is it was the twenty fourteen Super Bowl. So that's uh Broncos Seahawks. It was so 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 it came off like Pay Man's like historic twenty thirteen season with the Broncos. Thirteen three that year. Passed over for, for like five thousand five hundred yards. Fifty five touchdowns for them. Like they Oof. were the best offense that mm-hmm. like of all time. What, what what was the score of that game? Forty eight to thirteen Seahawks. Broncos first play that year was a bad snap <laughs> right, that led right. to a Seahawks safety. safety. Yep, yep. <laughs> and through box pools all across the country, out of wax, out of whack. If you had if you had squares or boxes, depending on where you are in the country, some people call them squares, some people call them boxes. Doesn't matter. Everybody was ripping up sheets right there because it was all it all went to heck. <laughs> all went to heck. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, I need I need a lot of scoring or a lot of weirdness this year because in my in my box pools, I got more sixes and eights than I know what to do with. Yeah. Oh my goodness! All right. but but we'll say but, but but one iconic Super Bowl that we forgot about was Super Bowl forty two. That was Giants Patriots. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> my dad will always toast a champagne glass to Eli Manning because of that. Love you, Eli. Yeah, that uh, th- twice. Okay, okay. Well, 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 well last one, Settler, Yeah. Well, 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 only one time because because it prevented the the 2007 Patriots from joining Perfectville with the with yep. the 72 Dolphins. Yep. Larry Zonka to to this day still toasts a glass to Eli. I know, Dad's a big uh, a big Dolphin fan. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Right. yeah. Sponsors. Shall we, shall we thank them for keeping us on the air? Indeed. That's your job. Well, we got the Pirate Pirate Museum. We were there just the other day. Like I said, if you get a chance to go there, it is really worth it. And then go back again and back again because you're going to learn things each time. I was actually talking to a woman that works there, and she said, yeah, I go through it, and I found something I never saw before. So it really is that fascinating when you do that. Um, me hands. You know, in my humble opinion, and what do I know about restaurants and restaurant business, one of the best run restaurants i'll go anywhere but certainly in saint augustine and there are very good restaurants in saint augustine that compete with me hands and can keep up with them but reggie meggs does a great job in that place uh the staff is fabulous they've been there for a long time um because they're treated well the food is fabulous the customers are appreciated it's a great place you got the backyard you've got johnny's oyster bar upstairs and you've got the porch. You've also got the pub downstairs, live music inside and out. You won't go wrong at me, Hans. You really won't. And try one of Chef Chris's blackboard specials. Get better and better each time he puts one up there. Shout out to Mac and Cheese. There you go. Uh, Citygate Distillery. Pick a flavor, any flavor. Go for a free tour and tasting. Well, it's not really a tour as much as a tasting. Um, but they've got some great flavors. They've got moonshine. They've got Coca-Cola whiskey. They've got smoked maple whiskey, peach whiskey. It's really a, a tremendous collection of flavors. They've got coconut rum. They've got really good stuff there. Um, and on that same note, the St. Augustine Distillery, one of the best tours in town, and I'm really looking forward to when they're going back to guided tours. I will keep you appraised on that as we go forward because it's going to be interesting to see what they choose to do with that. And again, in the old ice plant, you get an education on ice making, as I said, as well as whiskey making and spirits. And you know what? And they're a local business. They use California, uh, uh, Florida cane sugar, and, and that's what they use to sweeten their drinks, um, and that, that really works out well, too. Plus... Um, they've got mixers there. They've got a, a tiki mixer that's a, like a coconut base. They've got an old-fashioned base. Uh, they will help you with anything you need to do to make your cocktails better. And they might even teach you a little bit about how to mix up something really good for your Super Bowl party if you get there tomorrow or Saturday. They're open. Go in. Grab some whiskey. Grab some um, backup mixers for them, and you're in business. We've got A Bear Kresge & Associates. I got to start getting my papers in order. I hope you are too. Uh, it always comes down to tax time crunch, and they will keep you uh, keep you focused, and they can help you with your taxes. A. Bear Kresge and Associates here in St. Augustine. If you have your tax needs or, or financial planning needs, I think those are the people you really should talk to. Uh, Coquina Coast Realty. If you're looking to sell your home, buy a home, 
Uh, you're looking for a space to open a business? Can't go wrong with that. The man who runs that place is very, very knowledgeable about everything in St. Augustine. He's a handsome man, I've been told, but he's the one who tells me that. So I'm yeah. just I'm just passing that on. And uh, we've got Kaiser's for White Street, the deli on Anastasia Boulevard, Boar's Head Products, Fresh Break, Fresh, uh, that ain't easy to say with loose teeth. And these are all mine. Fresh baked bread every day. You're not going to go wrong there. Plus, you know what? They also have a local uh, a local market in there with local products. Behill Farms Produce uh, Honey, one of the best honey businesses you're going to find. A uh, local couple has hives everywhere. And if you're eating honey, you need to eat honey from the neighborhood that you're in because it helps you with allergies and your immune system. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And Kaiser's got a whole slew of, of local products there from local artisans. So not only are you supporting Kaiser when you go there in Kaiser's business, but you're also supporting other local um, merchants in St. Augustine in, in family-run businesses and cottage industries. So you're not going to go wrong there as well. And don't forget, try the bollocks. Mm -hmm. Just saying, try the bollocks. And uh, I think that covers our, uh, our our sponsors right now, so we can get back to good job, Lunster. Super Bowl advertising or halftime shows? I think we should go with advertising. Okay. Because will... because 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 since because since we're done for our ads, okay. Might, mm -hmm. might, 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 might as well talk with the most iconic ads of all time. All right, I'll all let right. you go first because I'm right. really partial to mine. All right, so I have like a whole bunch of honorable honorable mentions. Okay, that I have. Is so baby because one of them is your pick, but but but, but a lot of them are actually beer like companies like like so to, but, but, and most of them were Budweiser yeah the one like the ones like I could think about is the Budweiser the frogs three, the frogs on the lily pads yeah the yep. three frogs on the lily sure. pad sure sure uh, what's up that's a Budweiser one uh, and, and and obviously anything with the Clydesdales is, is just iconic. In my opinion, do a push also have the Betty White Snickers ad. <laughs> the you, you, not you when you're hungry. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and plus, also Michael Jordan versus Larry Bird uh, do, doing a shootout for a Big Mac. Right. But 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 my favorite is the Mean Joe Green Coca Cola ad. Yep. I, I, I know I have a little bit of bias because well. Steelers got a Super Bowl, but. It, it like 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 it is such a great like story within thirty seconds. Just just, just seeing me Joe Green being hobble hobbled, uh, a, a, a kid yeah. holding his coke, just asking him, "Are you okay?" Like it and, and, and mean and, Joe, yeah, yeah, and and and, and, and a great story about, about about the kid handing his 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 coke to mean Joe Green. Mm -hmm. Like then that's just that's just like a simple story to tell right there. Like 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 I mean, I mean sure, it, 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 it's supposed to say coke yeah. next people. I mean, sure, it does, but I mean, but, 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 but also it doesn't. It also yeah. doesn't taste as good as it was in the seventies. Well, that's true. Very damn you, damn you, corn syrup. Yeah, well, you know that's why you gotta buy, you know, Coke, the Mexican Coke with real sugar. Yep. You know, and label it as such. Um, yeah, that was a poignant commercial. Brings a little tear to your eye. They tried to redo it with Troy Palomalo. That wasn't as good. Not so good. The, the those, mean Joe Green, the, yeah. those damn lawyers. Yeah, the Mean Joe Green one was great. Um, it really was. But my my favorite. Um, and by the way, I will tell you that, um, every now and again, one of those Budweiser commercials seduces me. And I mean, seduces me. I do not like Budweiser. Um, you know, grew up drinking Schaefer and, 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 and other beers. Um, I'll drink a Heineken. I'll drink a, a, a Miller. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a Bud fan. And every now and again, I see one of those commercials and I go, yeah, I'll have a Budweiser. And I take two sips, put it down and say, hi, can I have something else, please? Thank you very much. But they get you. They get you the little, the little, the little Dalmatian, the Clydesdales. You know, the dog comes following them. Home. It's they're, they're, again the poignancy. Though I do like the ones where the the Clydesdales are just out in the field in the snow, kicking the football around. I kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. But my favorite and, and um, one of the best all time. I think this was actually a monumental commercial for a number of reasons. First of all, it aired once. It was the um, Apple commercial introducing the Macintosh in 1984. And I think it was groundbreaking and seminal because if you think about what the Macintosh computer did, it just brought computers to everybody, um, even at that little tiny little square one with the little square window. But it, it was it was groundbreaking. And the commercial was just uh, 30 seconds directed by Ridley Scott. Um, really? I, I, directed I, I, by Ridley Scott. Yeah. yeah. And um you have all these, and, and it was interesting because you have all these people in gray 
um, sitting in a giant auditorium watching a Big Brother-esque, because the whole thing was a, 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 a takeoff on 1984 in George Orwell's book. But there's a big voice on the screen, a big face on the screen, talking about how, yes, we can do it. You know, he drones on and on and on. And all these people are sitting there, and they're all in gray. They're all dusty. Um, they're all shaven head to the point that when they did it, they recruited a tremendous amount of legitimate skinheads out of London to be in that as extras. And then you see the only person of color coming through that, and by person of color, I mean in color, not not no. Anyway, um, Don't was get a so woman canceled, Lenny? I've been canceled so many times, Blake. I'm so used to it. Um, you know, look, I, I, my filters are weak. What can I say? But my intention is is honorable. I, I, I'm an upstand. Look, my consciousness is raised, I promise. Um, but my wife will debate me because, you know, I'm also a troglodyte um, <laughs> and a Luddite and, you know, can't figure out how to share on a, a, on a website. But be that as it may, um, a woman comes running in with a giant sledgehammer in her hand. Everybody else is in grayscale in it. And she's got, I guess, orange shorts and a, a white tank top. And this woman is running with a sledgehammer in her hand. And she's and all of a sudden you see a phalanx of police in back of her chasing her. And she gets there. And just as Big Brother is about to finish his his little screed about, you know, how I'm gonna subjugate all of you and you'll never survive, she just whips that giant sledgehammer around and throws it in. We and breaks shall the screen. prevail, bang. And that's it, man. And that was literally that brokered in a whole new world of computing, a whole new world of computers. It put Apple and Macintosh on the map, and that was in 1984, and they ran it once. You want to talk about making a statement? As a matter of fact, actually, that's not true, because they actually did it on, I think I have the date there, um, December of 1983, before it added the Super Bowl, um, on KMVT, Twin Falls, Idaho, TV station, just before their one o'clock sign-off, when TV stations would sign off for the night, they ran that commercial for 30 seconds before the show signed off at night. So it must have been 12.59 at night, just before they went to their test pattern and the national anthem. And they did that so the ad could qualify for all the um, awards in the award season for advertising of that year. Mm -hmm. And that's the only other time they showed it. And then it was around, it bounced around a little bit more than that. But that was it. Once, 30-second commercial, which, by the way, um, at that point in time, a 30-second commercial cost $383,000 as opposed to, I don't know, what's it, $70 million now or something like that? $7 million, $7 million for 30 seconds? Something, something yeah. uh, insane like that? It's insane so, yep, like, for, yep, for that. Yep. 40 years ago. 40 years to the day. Gee, I wonder if they're going to do, do an anniversary or something like that. Because it was 40 years ago this year. So, yeah, that was that was my favorite and most memorable uh, Super Bowl TV commercial. Oof, like, like, does it, like, they, like, the advertising did its purpose. Like, you remember these products that, like, 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 if you have a great commercial during the Super Bowl, you remember the products. Oh yeah, amazingly. Oh yeah. Like, 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 at, like, like you, you, like, like people know Apple more. People know Budweiser. People know like, like other companies. Like, like once, like, 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 if you have a great commercial, you will be remembered. Okay, so what was it? The Kia Sportage with the chipmunks or with the with the gerbils or whatever it was. The, I kind of remember that one, but I'm not buying that square of a car. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> trying to see which one was the worst Super Bowl commercial of all time. And now you you know, and in, in the land of spoiler alerts. You can see almost all the TV commercials for the Super Bowl before the Super Bowl. I mean, there was a, I don't know if it's happening this year, and I would it be surprised is. if it wasn't. They do a TV show with the Super Bowl commercials the day before the Super Bowl. Can we have some original programming in America, please? I ask you, please. I mean, it's not like there's not enough content because there is so much content between every streaming service. Uh, it's fascinating the amount of content up there. Yeah. And I, I often think that the largest industry outside of defense, and it might be inclusive of defense, is television production mm -hmm. or movie production because every country has an industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bollywood could eat the world. But, you know, 
Every country does their own programming. And it's really funny because some of them are syndicated and we see some of them. But if you just look at Netflix and look at the languages, things are on Netflix or are on in Netflix and how many different languages are there. And, you know, we're watching we're watching Spanish issues and, and French issues. And it's pretty wonderful. It's it's good quality programming. I watch a, a lot of British procedurals. Yeah, um, I can almost understand them as well. Yeah. Thank yeah. goodness for for for. Uh, Close so, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, so. uh, Barbara G mentioned that a great commercial, the Budweiser 911 commercial that that aired once as well for, yeah. for the Super Bowl. Yeah, but, but, but actually, they they actually re, they actually re shot that commercial ten years later when 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 One World Trade Center was was being re, rebuilt in two thousand eleven. They, they they did it for the one year uh, ten year anniversary as well. Yeah. So yeah. that that was very like like poignant as well. Yeah, you know we're, we're what we're we're twenty twenty two years away from that. 23 years away. Please don't make me do math. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is still one of the most gut-wrenching and poignant events. I mean, being a New Yorker, um, walking to the bay from Long Beach and looking and seeing the smoke still billowing up, um, it, it, it's still good. I, I've, I, I've been to, to the, the um, Ground Zero. Um, I was there, actually. Um, I had just gotten elected um, into, into the city council in Long Beach and was taken in by a couple of people who were um, putting new windows in one of the buildings right across the street from Ground Zero. And we went in, and it was one of the most um, frightening, moving, and somber experiences I've ever had when you're driving around the frozen zone in lower Manhattan, and, you know, you see things spray-painted on the walls, which was, you know, morgue this way, decontamination center that way. Uh, you didn't know what to do. We went into we went into a building that was literally across the street from Ground Zero and the Trade Center, and all you saw was just papers and dust. It was it's still horrific. Um, I've gone back subsequently and saw the um, the two reflecting pools, mm -hmm. and that's as, as far as I've gotten because I knew a lot of people that um, were were killed there. Um, um, I know, fortunately, I think I may have mentioned this on a, a previous show, um, a gentleman who I used to do career day in schools, you know, I come in as a chef, you know, Hey, how exciting kids. Hi, I'm a chef. How are you? What are you, what are you eating for breakfast? And then Al Fuentes would come in and he was just a strapping big fireman in search and rescue. And first of all, one of the greatest people in the world, um, love that man to pieces. And he had a, you know, he commandeered a police boat, went over, a, a, a fireboat went over it to, to the site, got in, had a freaking one of the towers dropped on him, and he was one of the last people they they found him and got him out. And there was a lot of a, a lot of struggle to for him to get back to health. And Al, you know, wherever you are in the world, man, you are just an inspiration. Gee, I mean, you you were before that, but you are still one of the greatest people in the world, and I love you to death, my brother. Um, yeah. But but I have not been able to bring myself to go into the museum yet. Mm -hmm. And I will get there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm, you know, on the periphery, you know, I, I mean, there are other people who suffered far worse um, associations than, than I did. Mm -hmm. So it's just moving for everybody that was involved in, in that at the time, um, nationally, but locally. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, I I definitely think like 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 one one of the big like healing moments in the country came came next year with the Super Bowl halftime show mm -hmm. with with right. with you two performing yeah. as well. So like, did you remember? Do you remember anything that? Do you, do you remember watching that live? Like like when I watched it, I don't remember it. You were telling me a little bit earlier, and and you're refreshing my memory. So I'm gonna see if I can find some of it. But yeah, yeah. 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 So, so explain to explain yeah, to our, yeah. our myriad of listeners. Yeah. So 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 the U two uh, performed the halftime show for Super Bowl uh, thirty six. That was two thousand two. Uh, so 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 so, so I believe the set list included uh, uh, a beautiful day and then where the streets have no name. The most famous of those was where streets have no name. Mm -hmm. And during that performance, uh, did uh, the uh, a, a banner dropped. That they basically had a a, a a a scroll of all the victims that died during 9/11. Then the one the one then when the song continues on the when the song like like starts getting like like bigger and bigger like 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 you just feel the emotions flowing like like we watching like like I I, I yeah. don't remember like 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 anything from like 2006 back. So but but just like rewatching it's like like you can you can feel like like. 
you can feel like even even though it was an Irish band performing, right? You you can feel like 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 he's he's helping America heal with that. Then then the big reveal of of, of him opening up his jacket with the American flag in yeah. it. So so that was that was a great moment there. But that that wasn't my favorite Super Bowl halftime show of all time. But but but, 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 but I think we know again, what most people poignant, right. It, but, 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 but it was like very important though. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you said, it, it was cathartic. Or tried to be, you know. I mean, I, I think catharsis took a long time for a lot of New Yorkers in particular, and are still, some people are still going through that, unfortunately. And it's been, you know, twenty years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. But but but, 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 but also, I also believe, did, I, but but of course, but but but, but, but definitely makes sense for the the Patriots, an American <laughs> name team, right. to win the Super Bowl right. after. After that, after that tragic event, and nobody thought that was fixed. No, no, I thought that was <laughs> no, that was no, no, all no, 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 Tom Brady. That, 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 that was, was just that was just pure talent. Again, I don't need to like the man, but I I can certainly appreciate his ability and talent. I don't like Patrick Mahomes, but I will not denigrate the man's ability. He is a talented, talented quarterback. I just wish he would stop whining. Drew Drew Bledsoe should have started that game though. Well, yeah, and then and then where would the Patriots have been? Uh, not good. Okay. So. They, they, they should have just won the one for America. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Adam But yeah. <laughs> but we agree. I think uh, I think you and I agree on our favorite halftime show. It is Prince. Playing Purple Rain in the Purple Rain. You don't get better than that. You're welcome, Barbara Jean. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but also another thing that people don't remember about this: the fam, you, the the Floor A&M band yeah. was there. Like they they were on the field like think 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 they think they were like 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 lighted up uniforms but most yeah. people don't remember that because well because it was Prince Prince was still Woo. like that good like, man that is great. man is you know may may he rest in in purple paisley peace yeah um, which ain't easy to say yeah um, but what's interesting is is um, Florida uh, A A M U their band uh, you know in the original three or four Super Bowls. They treated the halftime like a halftime at a football game, and they had marching bands. So the first three or four years, there were marching bands that came out. Grambling did it three years. Uh, uh, FAMU was was a couple, three years, and came back with Prince. So they didn't get into superstar celebrities for quite some time, and and I think a lot of those started in the let's see, um, in the in the well in the early nineties, you know, because in nineteen seventy, for those of those of you who are closer to my age or older, Carol Channing was the halftime the halftime act in 1970. So I don't know if she did Hello Dolly, but man, she probably did. Um, Gloria Stefan made a, a couple of appearances. Bruno Mars a couple of appearances. Beyonce twice. Um, but who can forget in 2004, Nipplegate? <laughs> well, you got to bring it up. You, you don't have to. You don't have to applaud it, but it, it was seminal as well. It's and you're telling me that invented YouTube. Yeah, I did. The, the the founders of YouTube like 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 what what like one a a a a place to go for for for, for like if moments like that happens. Hey, John. For for uh, for people to record it, like so 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 so, so that moment in like looks like like the start of the chain events of, of the formation of YouTube, which which yeah. which, which she is, which you'll see us later on tonight. Oh, really? Oh yeah, right. Exactly. Right. If you don't get us here, you get us on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, I, but I'm going to say something controversial. <laughs> That's usually my job. Go right ahead, please, please. Okay. So, so this one isn't like the worst. Like I'm not saying it's the worst. This is just like a personal distaste. I ain't like the Michael Jackson halftime show. Yeah. Mainly because you have 13 minutes to do a halftime show. He spent the first three minutes of it just standing there, just just, just letting the, the crowd cheer, sing the songs. And even even then, yeah. most of the song he only sang like I think he only technically sang one song, black and white, and I think Billy Jean was lip synced, <laughs> like bad. Like it was just a studio recording. He he didn't he didn't, he didn't do, do do like a live recording then to just lip sync over that. It was just a studio recording. Wow. 
And you were telling me that he got paid where other Super Bowl yes, performers have to have He was himself. the only one to get paid. But 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 most of, most of tech, but, but but he did give that money to, to to his charity, which is the whole point of like of, of like the final song that he did with the whole children everywhere where where, 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 where I think fans in the Rose Bowl like hmm. like, like held up placards with with, 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 uh, uh, with like a color. Yeah, they started doing some quirky stuff. There was flashlight flashlight gimmicks, there were card gimmicks in some of the halftime shows, yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting, which I did not know, and you might. I, I bet you your father does. Um, but Bobby just pointed out that um, one of the, the uh, Florida School for Deaf and Blind um, signed the national anthem one year. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Good but, for them. But speaking about national anthems, the best national anthem of all time, Whitney Houston. Of course. It has to be. It's the standard. Yeah. But we, we, know, we know what's funny about that halftime uh, that halftime show. No one saw it. Like, barely anyone saw it. So, right. so, so, so the year that Whitney Houston sang the Super Bowl, uh, sang the Super Bowl half, uh, national anthem was uh, Bill's uh, Giants, Scott Norwood, uh, Wide Ray. Right. <laughs> that year, it was New Kids on the Block with, with Disney uh, do, 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 uh, doing, like, some pro patriotic like like number mm-hmm. because because it was during the time of of the of the uh, Gulf War but most people didn't see it because 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 it was interrupted by by ABC News uh broadcast over the Gulf War oh no I'm sorry um, Barbara Jean I'm you, sorry you made, Barbara, you made Barbara Jean unhappy I look um, I, I, I I have to state facts. You, you didn't. You she didn't be, sing the songs. He didn't sing the songs. He right. just lip. I mean, I know everyone lip sing, but at least at least they actually do a different recording right. than just the studio version of the songs. Look, I will. I will. At tell least you Black Eyed Peas actually tried to sing the song. <laughs> they just didn't do it well. You know, but the Whitney Houston national anthem is the standard. Um, I do get a kick out of the fact that, you know, for those of you who may bet, there's always a over-under on the time of the National Anthem. I think it is. I think this year it's Reba McIntyre. Yeah. And think 2.05 is the, actually 2.43 is the time. Okay. 2.43. Yep. Okay. Okay. I have to think about that one. Yeah. And, and also Post Malone's doing America the Beautiful. Good for him. Yeah. Okay. The Mr. Bud Light. <laughs> Like, like he is addicted to Bud Light, like to a horrendous well, amount. Somebody's got to bring him back, you know. Indeed. They they got savaged for no real reason. Yeah. So, you know. All right. All right. Let's uh, see. What, what, all right. Okay. All right. So we yeah. have we we have four minutes left. Do you want to talk about this year's Super Bowl? I like, do. Like I do. What? I want your prediction. I think it's going to be. <sighs> and I need eights and sixes. That's all I'm saying. Eights and sixes. You you doing your squares? <laughs> oh baby, I have got some bad numbers. Oh, I I I I I think it's gonna be like like a regular score, uh, high a little bit high scoring, but not but not like not, nothing like out of the ordinary. I'm gonna say, uh, forty nine win at thirty to twenty. Brock Purdy wins Super Bowl MVP. Thirty to twenty is fifty. Yeah. So the over under right now is forty seven and a half. The Niners are laying two two and a half depending on where you look. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be an interesting look. You know what? I want it to be a clean game. I don't want anybody to get hurt. I want them to play up to their potential. I want it to be exciting. Um, I don't want the referees to have any overt involvement in this other than calling what they see properly. And it should be a good game. It should be. Right. Uh, me? I, I forget which way I need it. Well, I got a lot of eight. So I'm going Kansas City 28. Uh, oh, there you go. Kansas City 28. Say, uh, the, the San Francisco 49ers 36. I'm a winner! <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. We'll see. We'll All right. see. All right. How do you think the halftime show is going to go? It's Usher this year. I don't know. I, I, you know, it's going to be, I don't know if he's still being rhythm and bluesy. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I, I, I don't know if, uh, is Usher relevant? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Like, I mean, you know, has he got anything new coming out or is, you know? I don't know. But I don't know. I, apologies to Usher and Usher fans. Sorry, I don't Usher. know. I don't, I don't know. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I will. All right. All right. What's, what color Gatorade do you, do you think is going to be dumped on the coach? And you can bet on that as well. I take purple just because I like purple, but it seldom is. I I, th- I think it's going to be lemon lime, the yellow. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, and last one, heads or tails? Oh, uh, I'm an optimist. Go heads. All right. I'm going to go with tails. Okay. May the best man win on that front. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. 
But 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 I I also think it's going to be the 49ers mainly because their their receivers are much more better than than the Chiefs receivers minus Travis Kelsey, like the, and Rishi Rice is 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 really made yeah. a name for himself. He's a rookie who's made a really good name for himself. But the rest of them, you know, Valdez Scanling, you know, he, he he's on, he's off. He can't hold the ball. He can't hold the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony may not even suit up because they're pissed at him. Kadarius Tony, oh my guy's head. a talent, but he's a head case apparently. Um, they're they're Antonio Brown. Trust trust me, man. Just, right. just just cut him. Just just don't worry about him. Just cut him. And um, I mean, you know, I, 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 the the I believe the Chiefs are missing one of their better offensive linemen. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, and everybody's healthy except for George Kittle's toe. But you know, if anybody can play through pain, George Kittle can play through pain. Yeah. So hey. I'm looking forward to it. it. Should be a good game. It should. Look, you know, it can be a high scoring game. It should be an exciting game. Um. You know, if this ends up being, you know, a 12-9 field goal victories, it's going to be very interesting to see because, you know, you got two you got two of the best offenses in the business out there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But but one, but one more important question. What are you going to do once football ends? United um, Football League? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't do the off brands. I'm not doing arena football. I'm not doing the, the, what they took the X and the U and the Y and they made, they made another football league out of it. No, stop, stop, please. You know, I mean, when I grew up, there were seasons for things. Now, you know, the, you know, my answer to ice hockey is if the lake is melted, you shouldn't be playing the Stanley cup. You know, it's gotta be on a frozen pond. Hey. So, hey. Any, any, all right, anything else? It's seven. It's seven, I think eight, we're four. I think we're done, my friend. Good job, my friend. Appreciate you so Wednesday. very much. Right. We did it. You want to do the outro? Say, say tell everyone goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Bet with your head, not over it. Enjoy your wings. Order from Kaiser's now. He'll make you a great platter for your Super Bowl. Don't you worry about that. He will take very good care of you, my friend Kurt. I promise you. And enjoy the game. That's all I have to say. Just enjoy the game. May your team win. All right. I right, right. see. See you guys next week. Six thirty-four. Bollocks. Talking Sanders. We'll see you next week.